How's it going everybody? The time's finally here, we are getting a new hero and Ubisoft was kind enough to give me early access to Magi, so big thanks to them. Now, let me give you the usual disclaimer. The version we got to play here might not 100% reflect the version that you guys will get to play next Thursday. There is always the chance that things slightly change. So please keep your outrage in check and don't go all mental complaining about issues that might never make it to life. If you're familiar with my frame check videos you know how this is going to go. We'll be looking at the basic moveset with its intricacies first and then towards the end we'll go for some tips, feed details and so on. Since Magi has two stances and a unique way to switch between the two we're going to start with that. Holding backwards and pressing guard break lets you switch between staff and axe mode. Staff is your default one and every time you un and relock that is the stance you will start in. Switching between the stances takes 700ms. The switch is not guard break vulnerable but you do not have your guard up which makes you quite susceptible to attacks. Unlocking and relocking to switch to staff form is even faster, 400ms to be exact, but you risk eating an out of lock punch. There are also instances where you have a slightly faster flow like after parries. Here we have a switch time of 466ms. You can for example get a light parry in axe mode, switch to staff and still get a heavy, increasing the damage from 23 to 27. The moveset description also says that you can cancel all the recoveries with a stance change. You will see the weapon switch quicker than in neutral but the overall time from attack impact to switch is ever so slightly longer. For both neutral, chain and finisher attacks the switch time is 766ms so you do shorten your recovery by a little bit. So what does this all mean? I know a lot of people including me had hoped for in-chain stance switching to change attack properties. A little similar to what Bloodborne had or like a switch axe in Monster Hunter. Magi's two stances are much more defined than that. You do not really switch stances in the middle of combat. You decide on your stance beforehand. You make the decision that it'll be a duel and thus use axe mode. Or you enter team fight and thus switch to staff mode because of better hitboxes and hyper armor. I'm not saying that either mode is totally useless in specific situations but you will notice a severe drawback when you are in the wrong stance in the wrong situation. As I've just shown you, you shouldn't switch needlessly as it opens you up for quite some counterplay. More on the concept of a stance switching hero in a future video. Alright, let's start with staff mode first. First the infinite heavy into light chain. Neutral side heavies are 900ms, meaning they will not land on a GB. Top is 800 and will land. The lights are your typical 500ms ones, all sides, both in neutral and chain. In chain heavies are 1000ms. Then you finish your chain by pressing the same attack twice. Finisher light is another 500ms and the finisher heavies are 1000ms on all sides. The heavies are really slow so they do track some dodge attacks depending on direction and you will definitely see people parry at the wrong timing in the beginning. All chain attacks do have hyper armor starting at 100ms which further emphasizes the staff mode as the team fighting mode. I'm sure you guys remember what Barak said about it on the livestream. Furthermore, chain and finisher lights are enhanced, meaning that blocking them will not end the chain. Then the bash, a forward dodge long arm basically, and before people freak the fuck out, calm down, this one got to use. A limited one, but nevertheless. It's really slow with 900ms, so forget about landing this in a dual situation and don't use it in the middle of a team fight. That one is for ganks, I'll show you one in just a second. It's a grab with a smack to the face that does 20 damage and applies the second feat. The delay window on the dodge is 100ms up until 500ms. The grab portion itself is 1100ms and then it takes another 800ms for your opponent to get their guard back, so it does lock them down for a significant amount of time. And like I said, it does apply your tier 2 feet, which in staff mode decreases their defense. You can use it in chain after lights. Move has the exact same properties and speed. Recovery wise we are looking at the following, 1100ms for counter guard break, 900ms for a guard switch and 1100ms again for dodging. 
Currently, there is a way to use the stun switch as a way of recovery cancelling to be able to counter Godric. Not quite sure if that's intended or not, but I can see this being removed in a future patch. We will see. But overall, this move is quite punishable, and unless you dodge extremely late, you should reliably get a Godric. Now, here are some examples for ganks. You get a parry, you light into bash, your teammate confirms the bash with a heavy, then you get another two heavies of said bash. Confirm with light or guard break, depending on distance and opponent. Remember how I told you your quick swap stances after parries? This would be one of the instances where you could apply this. Some of you might now think that setting it up with a counter guard break is another way, and I thought so too initially, but after having seen the actual speed numbers of the bash, this is quite hard to do. Normally you set up 800 or 900 ms moves with a counter guard break, mostly on blockables. But we are looking at a minimum of 1000 ms here, which makes reacting to a counter guard break pretty much impossible, and it forces you to do it a little earlier. You start it almost at the same time as your teammate does the guard break. I'd stick with the in-chain version for ganks, but feel free to correct me if my assumption is completely wrong. And then a few more moves for staff. Zone attack, a 600 ms move with an insane hitbox. You have a proper 360 degree hitbox actually. And the other move that has an amazing hitbox is the dodge attack. It is a static dodge attack starting at 300 ms into the dodge. The attack itself is 600 ms. Considering the size of the weapon, the hitbox does make sense. We are looking at roughly what Pirate has, just with a weapon three times the size. The forward dodge version of it is 700 ms. You can delay it from 300 to 400 ms into the dodge, which is a little bit of a weird window, but I'm all for non-static inputs. This move is not feintable and also doesn't have any other additional properties, but it will catch rolls quite reliably. And then for the running attack, since staff is your out of lock stance, you only have a running attack with the staff, not with the axe. It's 700 ms, but also nothing special really, it does its job I guess. Then let's move on to axe, your dedicated 1v1 stance so to speak. We'll talk more about efficiency of each stance towards the end of the video. First the heavies, open heavies are all 700 ms. Finish heavies become unblockable and are 800 ms. Lights are all 500, opener and finisher. But not for the infinite chain. If you alternate heavy and light, just like with the Zerka or Shaolin, your lights become 400 ms in all directions, and the heavies are still 800. The moment you press the same attack twice, you chain to your finishes, and thus end the combo. Your zone is 500 ms, and links to both the 400 ms light, as well as the unblockable. So it is quite nice, since you can branch out to both. It only costs 20 stamina, but the damage is lower by 1 than your normal neutral lights. Now for your dodge attacks, your side dodge heavies are on a static timing again, the usual 300 ms into the dodge, and the attack itself is 533 ms, they count as heavy parries. The forward dodge heavy is a 500 ms move with a delay window of 3 to 400 ms into the forward dodge. I'm sure many of you will recognize the animation. Now for the bash, we are looking at a 500 ms bash with an input window of 100 to 500 into the dodge. This is not a legion kick variation. 
The bash can also be used in chain after every opener and chain light, not after the finisher light. But the character can go bash light at infinitum. So don't forget to not dodge, but complain about it. The follow-up light does only 9 damage, so this seems to be a rather conservative approach from Ubisoft to the bash, so it isn't perceived as too oppressive. Recovery-wise, we are looking at 7 RMS through the board for counter guard break, guard swap and dodge. Let me show you what this means in terms of defending against dodge attacks. As you remember, the staff dodge heavies are 600 MS and the axe ones are 533, both with a static input of 300 MS into the bash. I can defend against the staff one, but not against the axe one. Dodge timings, whether done on early prediction or reaction, do play a role here as well. So please keep that in mind when transferring this to other dodge attacks. Bob the Bash has quite good recovery values, but is also not very high damaging. Now let's look at some of the severe shortcomings of Axe mode, because in my opinion it is the worst mode of the two. For one, all chain options can be dodged on a single timing. Bash, Heavy and Light do not track, and Faint to GB loses against dodge attack. This makes this a very lackluster mix-up with very little pressure. Double dodging against the Heavies is also possible. Unless hard buffered, even a feint to GB can be countered since the second dodge is quite early. Similarly, the hitboxes of the axe heavies are extremely small. Granted, we know it is not supposed to be the team fighting stance, but nevertheless, I had hoped for them to be ever so slightly better. But fair enough for now, the intended use was for onesies. I'll let you guys be the judge after you've played him a little bit, especially against actually strong dual heroes. I don't think he can quite keep up. That's it for the moveset, let's look at the feats, including the alternate ones. <laughs> it's always funny since Ubisoft never shows them on stream and I get asked all week what they are. Let's get them out of the way, none of them are really worth it. The only real debate you can have is second wind, but I think I'd still gravitate more towards the unique tier 3 since I have a counter against flasks this way. The only one I really want to talk about is the unique tier 4. The bomb is really bad and the axis can feel annoying. Being nuked by a 70 base damage projectile is not a fun experience. For now, I'd say abuse the axe version and pick off priority targets in fights. Especially with the personal buff and potentially debuffs from allies, it should be pretty common to see 100 plus damage nukes with them. Alright, I think I'll end it here now. I want to make a separate video, just like I mentioned before, where I talk about the stance switch and mechanic a little more. So please give me some input in the comment section or on Discord and let me know how you perceive it or what you expected it to be. All in all, the character might not feel amazing in the first few matches, but he did grow on me rather quickly. Especially the star form can feel quite powerful. So don't discard him immediately. A lot of the players in early access felt similarly. But also don't be fooled and think this hero can perform miracles. Because you really can't. Alright, having said that, hope the video was helpful. Thanks for watching. Laters, everybody. Oh, I couldn't parry that. Okay. Phantom range. And now you can't even tell if it was proper phantom range. Ah. Yeah. Thanks, power flash. <laughs> Why am I doing that? Good question. Ah, damn it. Hi. Can I have help, oh, please? Out, team, what? Where are you? I'm the sea! <laughs> I've been <laughs> killing the three on left and right, but nobody helps you. <laughs> You've been there for so long. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh fuck, the double grab. Oh, good, I'm garbage. <laughs> what do you mean? No. Team! <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I <laughs> Oh, cheers, love. Oh, what? What, what, what was, was that, that interaction? Oh, what the fuck was that? Come on. <laughs>